I want to respond to a comment that a young lady made on the video, uh, The Mystery of Iniquity. And I think this comment is quite sincere. And I'm going to speak on that, but she gave me an idea for a topic. And I'm going to speak on patience today. Patience. Now, the comment she wrote was, I wish he spoke faster. It's kind of hard to stay plugged in. I just find myself wanting to speed the audio. Now, I responded to her and said, I understand. I speak slower because there are people that said I spoke too fast or they misunderstood what I said. They tell me I say things that I didn't say. So I slow it down for the dull and hearing. And that's true. In the past, people used to tell me, uh, could you slow it down? You speak too fast. Or they'll tell me, well, you said this and you said this and and I didn't say that. When I go back and check it, they made me even go back and check what I said. And when I went back to check what I said, I didn't say it. So what I started doing was slowing down my speech for the dull and hearing. I slow it down when I'm teaching or speaking on the Bible so that those that are not able to grasp what I say can hear it. I put it that everyone can understand what I say. There's no confusion of what I say. So I slow it down. Her response to that was, well, thank you for the content. I guess I'm being taught patience, even on YouTube. That gave me the idea for this topic is patience. Because... You can receive instructions from the Lord in the most unsuspecting places. I repeat that. You can expect or receive instructions from the most unsuspecting places, people that you would not even imagine. See, the Most High is so big that he can speak through anyone. It can come from any direction. You can be in an entirely different country, not knowing no one, not knowing the language. And the Most High could get a message to you. Now, the first scripture I want to speak on is 2 Peter's. The first chapter, reading the 5th to the 11th verse. And it reads as follows. And besides this, given all diligence... Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. You see how everything works with everything else? See, so you may have patience, but you lack temperance. Or you may have temperance, but you lack patience. You may think you have godliness, but you don't have brotherly kindness. So everything works together for the good. It says, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. In other words, you can't hear the message of the Most High. You don't have that spiritual insight. That's exactly what I'll call it is insight. You don't have that insight. So you have difficulty seeing, even though you may hear a message, you can't see it because you lack some of the fruit of the spirit. And one of the fruit of the spirit is patience. You have to have patience. So when you find somebody that slows it down, 
Sometimes it takes patience because I find myself doing that too. I'll watch a video and the person is speaking entirely too slow. And I find myself advancing forward. But when you advance things forward, you don't hear the whole message. You don't get the full understanding of what's being said. So then when you try to uh, quote it back, then someone would tell you, well, no, you got that wrong. You don't understand. You must have missed this part, which you did because you fast forwarded. You didn't take the time out to have enough patience to listen to the whole story. And that's why I always encourage you to watch the whole video. You could do other things. Just let it play. It says, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. The 10th verse says, wherefore the Raja, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. The 11th verse says, For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Now, another scripture I want to read dealing with patience is taken from the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, reading the 19th to the 21st verse, and it reads as follows. In your patience... Possess ye your souls. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let them that are in the countries enter therein too. The next scripture is taken from Hebrews, the 10th chapter, reading the 36th verse. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. See, so the race is not given to the swift, neither is it given to the strong, but it's given to those that endure to the end. And we're living in times where we need a whole lot of patience because time has sped up. Um, darkness had become darker. It's like we're living in a world of confusion. And Satan has not even come down to us yet with great wrath. Because he knows he have a short time. So if we can't handle what's happening now, if we don't have the patience to wait and to hold out, then many of us would be like those that have chosen the straight and broad way that everyone goes into that leads to destruction. Those are the people that's leading to destruction. They don't have the patience to wait. Those are the ones like those preachers that I spoke on that turned away from following Christ. They started questioning and doubting knowing that they weren't strong enough to handle certain information. So you have Christians that are stuck on Christianity. They only know what they're taught in church. They only know and repeat what they hear their preachers tell them. And never take the time out to study for themselves. The Bible says to study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed to rightly divide the word of truth. But if you don't have the patience to wait, 
and to hold out, you will stumble and fall. So sometimes it's good to have that patience. To sit through um, videos like mine where I slow it down for those that are dull of hearing. And even in this video, someone might say, I'm speaking too fast. Or they misunderstand what I say and misquote something I say. And then I'd have to come back and check it for myself. Did I say that? I don't recall saying that. And then I come back and listen to it. No, I didn't say that. Right? So I'm going to read that verse again. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Now, the last and final scripture I want to use is taken from the book of James, the first chapter, reading the first to the eighth verse. And I'm going to slow this one down. And it reads as follows. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. I'm going to repeat that. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So we may have faith in God. But do we have the patience to endure the trying of your faith? That thing that tries your faith. You have faith in God, be it sickness, be it the loss of a job, be it the loss of a loved one, be it the even this pandemic that have taken many people out, people that are sick, that's going through. Yes, you may say or claim that you have faith, but do you have patience to endure? Because then the devil begins to start whispering in your ears, telling you how you did wrong and now you're being punished by God and how God is not with you. And if God was so loving and kind, why would he allow this to happen to you? When you put your life on hold, to serve and worship him. Why would God allow these things to happen to children? And because of the fact that you don't have the patience or even the faith that you thought you had, you begin to start doubting. You begin to start listening to the devil talk to you. And then the devil have his ministers out there that will come and validate what he, the devil, whispered in your ears. And it may come in the form of black consciousness. And you listen to that. And then you end up being like that seed that fell on stony ground. Where you had no root and you withered away when the sun came out. So I'm going to read that again. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The fourth verse says, but let patience have her perfect work that ye might be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God and give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. The sixth verse says, but let him ask in faith. I repeat that. Let him ask in faith, not wavering. In other words, you're not doubting. You're not questioning your faith or if God can do it. Because of the circumstance you may find yourself in. But it says, let him ask in faith, not wavering. For if for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven 
with the wind and tossed. For let not the man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Now that's important right there because many of you claim to have faith and trust in God and you may have you may even pray and ask God for things and don't receive it. So you might have a loved one that's sick and you pray for them or even you yourself may go through something and you pray and it seems like God does not hear your prayers. Could this be the reason why? For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. I'll go back and read the sixth verse. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. The seventh verse says, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And then the eighth and final verse says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's a person that one moment they have faith, they love the Lord, they trust in God, and then they doubt God. He don't exist. It's a fairy tale. Now they want to be black conscious. Now they want to be polygamous. When before they said God called them to preach, they said God anointed them. But now they don't believe in God. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, in everything he do in life, in all of the choices that he make in life. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So feedback, tell me what you think, subscribe, click on the Cash App, donate to the channel, or click on my website. Fearlesswear.online and buy some of the merchandise. Feedback, tell me what you think. Till next time, I'm fearless.